My children, have you ever noticed the small white malpaca blossom which grows high in the mountains and by the seashore? Did you ever wonder why its delicate petals form half a circle as if someone cut the malpaca flower in half? Come, sit here beside me and I will tell you the story of the malpaca blossom. A long time ago in ancient Hawaii, there was a proud son and brave warrior named Keala. His ohana or family lived in the Malka upland regions, where the oo'a'a bird flies from one ohiolehua tree to another, sipping the sweet nectar from the lehua's fiery red blossoms. While walking through the forest of Koke'e, where the forceful running waters of the streams sing to the palapalai ferns. Keala tells his younger brother, Kavika, of a dream he had earlier that morning. It was a very clear, almost real kind of dream Kupuna, or elders, deemed serious enough to interpret. For in the days of old Hawaii, dreams, such as those that come to one before the morning sun, are a message not to be taken lightly. Kavika listens intently to his older brother's dream, for he too knows the significance of such a dream. Keala tells of his dream where he sees himself leaving his Malka village. Keala tells of the salty air he smells, the pounding waves upon the beach. But Keala knows he must follow his dreams. He must follow his na'au to the Makai soon. Quickly, Keala and Kavika returned to their Maka village. It is a peaceful village where sometimes in the quiet afternoon sun, one can hear the shrill of the shy mini goose from behind the poor tree. That day, the usual quiet afternoon was broken. Everyone was busy preparing a huge luau in Keala's honor. For the wise Kapuna already knew of Keala's dream and of his soon departure to the lower lands. The Vahini of the village are Hanalima by weaving Lauhala mats for his festive occasion. They are pounding the staple roots of the Kalo into poi. His ohana are saddened by Keala's departure, but happy that he has such a strong vision and proud that he will follow his dreams. The villagers are rolling their ulumaika stones 
in a game of lawn bowling. The poor eye is ready to put in the imu. Such a fine feast! There is even Opihi and Nimukohu from the Ohana that lives near the seashore. The Kane are testing their skills with the Ihe or long spear. Someday, maybe we can throw our spears at the chief who is trained in the art of dodging and catching them in mid-flight. The time comes to say aloha to Ke'ala, our strong, brave warrior. Your parents and your ancestors are with you in spirit, wherever your alanui takes you. Kila, his mother, brings out their sacred boar tusk. This is for you, my son, to protect you. Wear this as your father did. May our Almakua be with you and return you to us. The Vahine of the village try to hide their tears. They are sad. They will not see their Ke'ala for a long time and will miss him dearly. They know he must follow his dream. Kavika escorts his brother to the edge of the forest and embraces him with mana. As Kavika looks out into the distance, watching his brother disappear down the hill. Finally, Keala is on a sandy beach. He smells the salt spray and hears the pounding waves. 
The air smells different here, Keala thinks. Not at all like the fragrance of the forest. The ocean villagers are pulling in their upena, hoping it will be a full of fish. Hukilau! Hukilau au! They shouted in unison while pulling in the net. It takes almost a whole village to pull in a huge net. Away! The catch isn't as bountiful as expected. But Aolipilikia, no problem. They have enough dried fish from their last catch to last a while. It is time of plenty. The sea urchin is fat and the uhu fish are many. A special hula is written and danced in this time of harvest. The Wahine performed this hula led by Naupaka, daughter of the High Chief Makali'i. She is fair like the moon and graceful like the olapa trees that sway in the gentle breeze. Naupaka, the favorite daughter of Makali'i, is blessed with beauty and grace. In her dance, she tells of her love for her home where rain falls gently on the sea and the trade winds blow softly through the cocoa palms. Ke'ala is spellbound by her beauty. He has never seen a wahine such as Naupaka. Her dreamy eyes entice him to tell her his deepest feelings. While the other village wahines are washing their cup of cloth, Keala creeps up to Naupaka as if to admire a bright blue uhu fish. So begins their love story, a love that is nurtured in secret, for such a love as theirs is forbidden in old Hawaii. It's kapu, or forbidden for a commoner like Keala, to love Naupaka, the daughter of High Chief. The penalty for breaking such a couple is death.
secret they share their aloha or their love. Together, they enjoy the beauty of the aina. The whispering waterfall below them will tell no one of their secret love. The oo'a'a bird in the lehua tree has his lips sealed with sweet honey. All seems restful and forever. Without warning, Kukane, a skilled canoe builder, searching for tall kua trees to shape his canoe, comes upon the two forbidden lovers. At first, Kukane cannot believe his eyes. Is that the fair-skinned Naupaka with that Malka boy Keala? No, it should not be. Oh, way! Kukana knows he must tell Makani, or he too, will face the penalty of death. Makali'i and his warriors are sharpening their ihe at the stream. Away! Is this true what you tell me, Kukana? Let me see for myself. The law of the land is written, even the Ali'i cannot break this couple. Ke'ala, the common Makaboy, must die. No, father, no, please, kill me too, for I will die without my Ke'ala. Go, Ke'ala, escape. We must leave this land where we cannot love freely. Go, my Pili Aloha. Keala escapes Makali'i's warriors and runs away from a battle he knows he cannot win. Following the stream, he reaches the pounding surf. Now Paka's tears flow from her eyes. Hush, my Pili Aloha. I must leave you now. Here, take this boar's tusk my mother gave me. I am going Malka. I am going now before my heart overcomes my head. Without giving Naupaka a chance to take another breath, Keala was gone. Through her tears, Naupaka sees Mount Vai Ale Ale standing majestically in the calm. There will be no joy living without my Keala. I will go to him. I must follow my heart. Nothing else matters. Naupaka has never been in the mountains. She must cross the stream 
Her heart pounds faster, but the current is strong. Now Pukka struggles. Now Pukka has never been in the mountains. She must cross the stream. Her heart pounds faster, but the current is strong. Now Pukka struggles. Away. Now Pukka is swept to her death. The necklace is caught on a branch and blows in the midst of the waterfall. Manu, the bird takes the makana and carries it into the forest. Away! 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 Ki'ala lifts his head and cries as the angry sky breaks open. Ki'ala knows as the storm blows wildly around him. Taking Naupaka's coral surfboard, Keala stands on the sand. He looks out over the rough seas to where only he can see. He knows there is a place where their love can go, forbidden nevermore. Keala paddles out in the giant seas. He chooses the biggest wave to take his last ride to join his sweetheart. why the Naupaka blossom is separated. One half blooms on the beach for Naupaka's love and the other half blooms Malka for Keala's love. That my Mo'opunas is the beautiful sad legend of the Naupaka blossom. They are together now, our Malka boy and our Makai princess.